This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah, normally you're going to hear Pete come in at this particular point in time, but this is uh, you know, an emergency. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pete always going, eh, hey, we're back, and it being Sebastian show. You know what? Uh, we're going, we're going something different, different today. <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't even want to set a fake vibe with my game show intro of "We're back, baby." You, you yeah, let them know yeah, right out of the gate. Right out, right <laughs> out of the gate. Uh, uh, I ain't feeling well, <laughs> and it's not, <laughs> and it's not COVID. All right. No. Is it a <laughs> mental week? Did we have a mental week? We had a mental week, but before we get into any coronavirus bullshit and and whatnot, because I know some people tune into this to kind of maybe get away from that. No doubt. Uh, I want to start with something a little bit more lighthearted, and uh, it, it happened to me yesterday, and it's fresh on my mind. And um, we got invited yesterday to good friends of ours uh, built a house, and it was a long time coming. It was a three-year ordeal, and uh, they invited us over to their home to see it. Of course, social distancing, masks, don't get all fucking hopped up. But uh, uh, we were going to go over there. Now, let me set the table. All right. These, uh, this couple, good friends of ours, love having them over. Uh, so I, I have to start by saying that because they might listen to this and, and, uh, who knows? They probably what, what, do. Everybody does. It's blowing up. Yeah. It's, it's blowing up. It's They're listening on the fucking space station. There you go. First F bomb three minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> Told myself I wasn't going to do that today. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, it, it might be a lot of that today, but, but, um, I'd say over the last seven years we've known them, they've been to our home, I'm going to say, 40 times. Wow. Right? Wow. Um, Not only for just having them over for drinks and food and what have you, but, you know, we've had parties throughout the years for the kids and showers and what have you. Okay? Got you. Got you. you. Okay. Uh... And, and mind you, if those of you that are just started listening to the show and might not know who Pete and myself are, uh, the way I entertain, I really like to pride myself on my hosting ability. Um, we've, we've gone over this many a times. If you come over to my house, the first thing I ask you, Pete, what do you want? You want beer? You know, a drink we want. And there's going to be some food out. Yeah. Whether you yeah. like it or not, there's going to be some food out. So that's kind of how I treated everybody that's come over to my house. Particularly the during The what? That's the level of service I can pay your house to. I've never <laughs> been, but what it would be like to go to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Let me get, is this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> Just everything right there, clean, spotless, <laughs> whatever you're thinking you want is brought to you. Just flawless. And, and I get this. I th- it's cultural, number one, coming from the family I come from. We've always been v- overachievers in the hospitality. But I've taken it to another level because I used to work in hospitality at a high level at the Four Seasons Hotel. And I've learned a lot of tricks of the trade, if you will, by working there. Uh, for example, an- anticipating the guest needs. I know what you want before you you want it. Uh, similar to uh, Steve Jobs. He-, he built iPhones because he knows what you want. You don't even know that you need it, right? Yeah. Similar to my hospitality skill set. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, I haven't drank uh, since Friday fucking mind is like firing on all cylinders. I'm wow. sorry. Wow. Uh, Good to hear. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, could, I could just tell with the opening monologue, what well, we're, we're five minutes in. I could just tell the mind is sharp. <laughs> besides besides that. Mine's is dull and fried as ever, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't lean over to itch my knee five minutes earlier, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, you, I guess you'll be oh. flying the plane. Now, let's go. What do we got here? I'm loving this. They're okay. coming over. They've been over your place a ton of times. The services. 
to your point of anticipation, there are things when I'm at your home where I'm like, oh man, I didn't even think I wanted that, but that's a nice thing to have, like a certain glass, my water at my bed. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're yeah, saying. Top shelf I, service. I, a phone charger in, in the guest room just in case you forgot yours. You know? Wow. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. Come on, man. I mean, honest to God. Uh, <clears throat> even, even during COVID, I, I prepared separate cheese plates for this couple uh, just because, you know, you don't want to intermingle the cheese uh, because of COVID. So everybody got their own wine glass, their own their own wine. I poured the wine in a craft and they, you know, took from there and we took from our own craft. It's just well thought out. Okay. And I don't expect anybody to do this on the flip side. I don't expect this from people to do this level of service. It's just what I get joy from. I like putting a a smile on people's faces, not only doing stand up, but if they're going to come to my home, I want them leaving the home kind of talking about the experience. Okay. That being said, and mind you, I have not been to this couple's house ever. They've never invited us to their home. So yesterday we go over and uh, you got three adorable kids. He's home. Wife's not. And we knew that going in. She was going to be doing some real estate stuff. So came, came over and uh, as soon, the soon the, I do this with everybody. As soon as I walk into your house, I'm scanning and I'm looking for a tray. Whether right. it be cheese, yeah, cheese, oh, okay. crackers, uh, chips and salsa. I'm looking for something that I'm going to be hanging around while I'm there. Okay? Right. <laughs> I need to post up. Side note, even to get to get to my service skills, and we've talked about this before, but for the new listeners that might, might have not uh, heard that episode, I have pot, and I don't smoke pot. So I got joints. Just in case someone wants to fire up. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I have a question, a uh, service question. When you're having people over, um, should you already have food out when they walk through the door? Or once they're in and you take their coats off, do you then go and get and bring out the first crackers or charcuterie or whatever? Excellent question. And I'm glad you asked. Uh, I time it. Uh, so you don't want cheese sitting out sweating, right? <laughs> right. So. I kind of got a gauge of when that person's coming in, you know, they'll ring the, the bell and, and then, and then the stuff will, will come out depending on the food. Uh, you know, if it's chips, I don't like to crack the bag an hour before they come over just because of freshness, but the chips are out with the bowl next to the bag. So it's a, it's an open and pour. It's like, I'm not searching for stuff. It's, oh, it's, okay. it, it happens nice. really quick, you know? Wow, so, okay. Yeah. So they'll sit down and boom, a cheese plate's there and whatever they want is there within three to five minutes, okay? Because normally I'm the one in the kitchen while Lana is entertaining. It's like we're both never away from the guests. That's another thing that we like to do is you, you entertain, I will, I will get the food out. I don't want to leave them too, because you ever see two people in the kitchen, and then the people have to come to the kitchen, and there's really, you know, the, the, the people might be in the stove, and the refrigerator, they're pulling out stuff. Yeah. I like to do that unencumbered, and I like to have Lana, because that's what she's good at, just kind of uh, schmoozing the guests. Okay, because it is it is uh, natural, especially for Italians, like I migrate to the kitchen, not to help, just to bullshit with the person in there, you know, so... You're trying to keep uh, keep that separate. I like that. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, not to help. I love that. Uh, we we got into that last. Did we get into that last week with the with the helping at my mother-in-law's? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Did I, mean, I no, about, I don't think so. I, we didn't, we didn't get we into talked that about whole, clearing the table. Yeah, yeah, but your mother-in-law clearing yeah. the table. I shouldn't I shouldn't see anybody else's dishwasher. Did we talk about that? No, you shouldn't see anyone uh, else's dishwasher. This, I, I must have came up with this during the week. I never want to see the inside of your dishwasher. <laughs> Why, man? Huh? <laughs> Why? <laughs> the only dishwasher I should be pulling open and putting plates and glasses into is my own. I don't want to go to your house, rinse my plate, open up your dishwasher, but I don't want to see 
anybody else's dishwasher. Oh, because you're a guest, right? Is that what you say? Absolutely. Yeah, what am I doing? Why am I seeing the interior of your dishwasher right now? <laughs> this means I'm helping. I shouldn't even be sitting around the area that when you're cleaning this shit up. <laughs> right? You should be sending me to another room with a glass of brandy right now. <laughs> when I go to other people's house... It's like a restaurant. I don't want to see the breakdown in the back of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. It makes me feel like you want me to wrap it up. I don't like the pressure. I don't either. I don't either. I just see dishes going into a dishwasher and the and the sink on. I'm thinking bedtime, right? <laughs> yeah. So I don't want I don't want to have that deter me if I have things to discuss with the people I'm with. I don't want to be hearing clanging and this and that. I'm thinking to myself, all right, even if I wanted to get into a meaningful conversation, I can't because the hosts are already yeah. taking a shower. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to compete over you scraping uh, scraps off into the into the garbage can with the knife, right? I'm trying to talk and I'm hearing that shit. I hear you. <laughs> Absolutely. So good bit. Now we go to the uh we go inside the house and like I said, I'm scanning. I don't see nothing out. All right. So now it's one o'clock in the afternoon. It's not that I'm starving. Okay, but I figured, all right, maybe there'll be something to munch on while we kind of hang out and talk about the house. Right. Nothing. So uh, not even an offer on a, on a, you want a water? Nothing. No drink offer, which I think is hospitality 101. As soon as you enter somebody's house, something to drink. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think it is? Do you list what you have? To drink, or do you wait for the person to tell you, "Yeah, give me a, a beer," or do you go, "Hey, uh, we got lemonade, we got uh, vodka, tequila." Do, what do you do? Well, <clears throat> depends. I'm usually offering to drink more for like a service call or something for a guy, so I usually just go with those guys. I'm like, "You want a water, or coffee, soda, or something?" But not I'm service. Not, I'm talking. I'm talking like family. Your your father, your brother come over. I gotta tell you, everybody. I just had buddies over last week. It's unbelievable how much these days everybody brings over exactly what they want. I mean, the guy brought the lime for his drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shit. It's like people <laughs> do great... not want to fuck around anymore and not have exactly what they want. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Wait a minute. This guy brought, uh, what, Corona with lime? No, nah, he was drinking uh, some sort of a tequila drink, and he brought uh, he brought the tequila, and he brought a mixer, and he brought uh, the lime. And I didn't even see, so I went back out in the kitchen. I'm like, Jeremy, you got your lime? He you brought your lime? He goes, I don't know if you're going to have a lime, you know? So... I'm surprised he didn't bring his own ice and glassware. <laughs> right? I was like, what, do you got a cutting board in your pocket? <laughs> oh. yeah. You know, his wife's got the, she brings a six pack of the uh, of the lime beer or some sort of beer she wanted. Because very people don't drink the basics anymore, man. They got very, people get specific cinnamon whiskey. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're, you're right. In the seventies, right? My father had Jim Beam. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he had a Crown Royal. He had Armoretto Stone or Armoretto di, Sor di Sorrento, whatever the hell that was. Right? Yeah. That was a staple in the Italian house. <laughs> a vodka and maybe a gin. All right. Right. And to your point, if people are coming. You offer somebody a, a Miller Lite, they go, Miller Lite, don't you got an IPA? <laughs> yeah, IPA. All right. I mean, you got a, you don't have a blueberry beer or it's, <laughs> <laughs> or it's Halloween time. No, no pumpkin beer. No, this is a man's house guy. The fuck? Oh. <laughs> I want Freddie Boy over apple cider. Apple cider. He goes, no, it's apple flavored beer. I'm like, holy shit, bro. Only thing worse than that would be dick flavored beer. I hate apples. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh god, I hear you on the apples though, bro. Oh, I fuck, uh, it's terrible. I, I am it. so it's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible fruit. All right. All right. Now it's funny, God. So we walk in. 
Now, mind you, I walk, this guy's got a beautiful house, brand new house, just moved in. Just moved in over the weekend. We're there on a Sunday. Friday and Saturday, they were moving their stuff in. All right? Wow. Okay. And he had it built, you said, right? Very he had it. He had it built. Uh, I walk by his bar. And he's got like an exposed bar where, you know, you could go up there and, and pour it. It's not like behind, you know, it's not a bar bar. It's like a, it's almost like a built in uh, where you could display your alcohol. And I'm nice. looking, he's nice. got, he's got good stuff. He's got some really good tequila, tequila I like. And mind you, this guy has brought over stuff, brought over, you know, a bottle of tequila, a bottle of wine, ice cream, what have you. Yeah. By the way, this is how specific I am. I'm sorry to keep bragging about my hospitality, but you're I want not bragging. The, you're informing, guy. Big I'm, I'm, infor I'm, I'm informing. You're correct. I want the listeners to kind of know what they're dealing with. Okay, my father bought me for Christmas one time these little bowls. They're silver bowls on a slant. It, it's uh, it's almost at a 45 degree angle, and they keep the ice cream cold. Okay. Yeah. And those came with, and I don't know, maybe you saw these when you were over, maybe not. They came with like little silver spoons. Uh, and the spoon was a rectangle, you know, like uh, it wasn't like a normal spoon. It right. was a rectangle. It was like an ice cream spoon. So when you put the ice cream in there, it has, you know, it keeps it cold from, from melting. I think you would love, love these just because no. the amount of yeah. ice cream you I go a step further with it. <clears throat> I put these bowls in the freezer. Okay? These are yeah. silver bowls. Yeah. So they come out, uh, and it's equivalent to putting uh, a frosted beer mug in the freezer. So it's ice cold when you pour the beer, right? Yeah. It kind of keeps yep. the beer cold. Yeah. So these come out, and they got like almost like a snow on them, like a little snow. And then you put the ice cream there. You almost oh. feel like you're at the. You're almost thinking Santa Claus is going to walk through the door while you're eating one. Of oh sandwiches. my right? God! It's just for fun, it sounds like I could carve my initials with my fingernail <laughs> in the ice on the side. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Absolutely! Oh, Absolutely! Wow. All right. Now I know he likes because like I I did this with, and I know. He likes that. He liked it so much, he brought over ice cream last time he came over, and he goes, I brought this over because I know you got the bowl. Like, he brought it over because I got the bowls that go with it. You know what I'm saying? You inspired him to bring something to go with what you got. That's that's huge, man. That's huge. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. So I, I ain't knocking this guy's ability to, you know, like, because that's another whole, whole, we go down a rabbit hole of when you come over to somebody's house, do you bring stuff? Yeah. Um, so, and he's always brought stuff. And again, I want to preface this by saying this guy is, is, a, is a nice guy. I'm just commenting on this situation yesterday. Can I no, can I add though one ahead. sec? Yeah, uh, the bar that you mentioned that he has, I, I just yeah. want to go out of my way saying that every man is listening. If you're gonna do something, that that's exactly how you want to do the bar. These bars, and I see too many of them, where it's an actual bar. It, it, does it come with a bartender? It, it, it makes no sense. So one guy's gonna go behind there, and I'll be the guy tonight. It, 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 it's ridiculous. I agree. You see these in a lot of older homes where they thought that. Um, I don't. I really don't know the mindset behind having a bar that literally equates to you being in a bar or nightclub where one person is supposed to stand behind there and make drinks for everybody. Yeah. I like this new open format where of course bars there. There's some ice. There's some. There's some glassware. Make yourself a drink. However, depending on the size of the party, I don't like people making their own drink at my house. So if there's really? six, yeah, I'm not into that. I'm not into that people going up, mixing themselves a drink. I would prefer I make the drink. So if I'm sitting there talking to you, right. and I, I, I'll, I'll always monitor your, your alcohol consumption or your drink consumptions. I'll glance down, and I'll notice when you're 20% uh, 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 or when you're 80% done, I'll offer another drink. You want another drink? This way you don't have to get up. 
I already got it. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go make you a drink. You yeah. don't have to get a fresh glass. Okay, fresh glass. What? <laughs> what Bro, we what? We we've discussed this years in the past too, though. But at what cost, man? Someone's coming over to hang out with you. That would I, I'd be following you around, just trying to talk to you while you're doing all this. Oh, oh here I'm gonna decline this. You, you know, we you were at the party that I threw for Christmas. Remember? Right. Yeah. And. I was buried. I didn't really have a lot of time because I was doing everything. I was cooking. I was making right. eggnog. I was doing all that stuff. Uh-huh. I remember. I've got it down now where if I'm going to have a party with more than, I'd say, 10 people, I'm bringing in people. I'm bringing in a guy who's going to who's gonna make uh -oh. some drinks or, or, or what have you. Oh, okay. Because then, then it becomes like that party. I don't get to spend time with the people. I'm, right. I'm buried in the kitchen the whole time. But if it's a manageable party... I'll take the responsibility of not only cooking but serving the alcohol. And I got the whole uh, the whole drink thing, new glass thing, from working at the Four Seasons. Actually, at the Four Seasons Hotel, a little side note, they require that you switch out the glass after every two pours. So if you're drinking a beer and you want another beer, I'll bring out the bottle of beer. I'll pour the second beer in the same glass. And then if you order a third bill... Beer, I then remove that glass and bring a fresh glass, okay? Uh-huh, yeah. Because the reason being, if you look at a glass after three, four, five times, and you you got the same glass, you're drinking a beer out of, like a Pilsner glass, yeah. you got you got fucking fingerprints on there, you got uh, cashew dust, oh. <laughs> you, you, right? <laughs> and, if, and, if, and, if you're a, and if you're a female... You got lipstick marks all over the brim. Right. You know, if, you, right. if you're using that over and over again, the brim of the glass is red. Right? <laughs> yeah, all right, shit. You're I'll tell you know how long someone's been drinking at your party. Look at that glass. <laughs> dirty. All right, that's good to know, man. But, I mean, that's a lot of work. That's not a lot of work. What it is is it, it allows you to finish the 20% you got left while I make the fresh one. Oh, no. that's true. So you don't have to rush because they're never empty because you got 20% worth of a drink time to make yeah. the next one. Yeah. Nice. Wow, okay. bro. You got to write an article about this, like for one of them, uh, you know, Good Home and Garden magazines or something. <laughs> Proper entertainment. Really? I'm no, serious. I think I, I, think I definitely should. The phone charger should. blew me away. <laughs> Oh, the phone charger is, 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 is on, on both sides of the bed. So if you and Jackie came, there's both, there's chargers on both sides of the bed wow. Wow. to charge your phone. Now, I, to, and I don't want to pull you away from going forward with this, but another quick question I had. Don't, don't you feel as uh, when you're entertaining, you and Lana, and you said we always have one person out with the company. Yeah. I like to give my company a, a five-minute breathing from me and Jackie, if we're having two people over, I like a moment where we're not with them so they can regroup. If they want to have that convo about how do we get out of here, I want to go home or something, I want to make it easy for them to have that because I don't like to see the rolling of the eyes when I'm hanging out at other people. Like, oh, look at them, look at them, they want to go. I can fucking tell. I don't like that shit. No, Swear I, I, I while we go wash the dishes. I, I like that. I like that. And I will bring Lana in <clears> for, hey, babe, could you help me out with this? And I will give the the couple that time to say, hey, you know, you get out of there, the kids and whatnot. Whatever plan yeah. they have. Uh, although myself and Lana, we have a plan going in to the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's like De Niro when he decides not to kill Maury in, uh, you know, the uh, Goodfellas. Don't you have that moment where you're, like, having an unexpected good time? You look at Lana like, forget that thing. Forget that thing. <laughs> no, but we're going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> That was such good acting in that film when he said that. Yeah, yeah. That that I swear to God, I don't even think that was written. I think De Niro during the during the scene was having such a good time. <laughs> and he leaned over and he goes, forget about that. I, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think it was in the script. Can you imagine not knowing a story or a joke you just told at a table kept you from dying? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> How'd you find that out three weeks later? Like you go, Pete, remember we were on the bus and you told that story about Beirut and John was dying? Yeah, he was going to kill you. <laughs> but he loved that story so much. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. So here we are. We're at the bar in the new house. We're walking past the bar. Clocking what he's got. All right. No f no food. We're an hour in. No offer of either a, a morsel of food or a drink. Not even water, right? I'm swallowing wow. my own I'm swallowing my own saliva at this point. Right? <laughs> Now, I don't want to ask, because some people go, why don't you just ask for some water? Yeah. If I ask for water, it completely cripples the story. So I will let things go for the story afterwards. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you've ever been in, in, a, in, in an experience and you go, if, if I say something now, this ain't going to play out, right? Like if you ask for if I ask for water, you gave me water. There's no story after that. Because, I mean, because you're at the point now where you're like, I gotta see if I'm gonna go a whole visit without being offered a liquid. <laughs> that's that's where I'm at. After an hour in, I go, I want to see how long this goes on. Now, that, bro, I gotta make a note because I did something like that. <laughs> What'd you do? I was driving with Jackie two days ago, and me, her, and Sadie were in the car, and I wasn't talking, and nobody was talking. And I'm like, I'm not going to talk now. I want to see how long the family goes without talking. And by the time we got about a mile away, still no one talked. I couldn't hold it anymore. I go, God, am I the straw that stirs the drink in this family? <laughs> they go, what? I go, fucking nobody talks if I don't get it going. Shit. So right there, I get what you're saying. If I would have just said earlier, hey, is anyone going to talk? I don't get the story. Oh, my God, man. We must be working on the same. I've done that, but the opposite. I've done where my wife's talking, and I've told myself I ain't going to respond yeah. to anything <laughs> she's saying. And I want to see how long it <laughs> takes her... <laughs> Then she'll go without even realizing that you're not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying nothing bad. <laughs> oh, shit. It's almost like if I could have a wax version of me just sit here with the head jiggling a little every once in a while, I could go golf. <laughs> <laughs> How long oh, did you go? Did you go pretty far? Did you have to uh, say to you? No, it was good. It was it was a good. I mean, four minutes not talk, not responding to somebody is a long time. You Hell know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she would say something, and it would just like trickle off. Like she would go, "Oh, you know what? Uh, it's a beautiful day. Maybe someday we should we should go to uh, the zoo or whatever." And I didn't say nothing. Right? I'll just take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, right there, I mean, like, what do you got, fucking, what's your problem? You don't like the zoo? <laughs> I mean, right there. She let that float. She's so sweet. She's a, yeah, she, she's a doll. So, <laughs> so here's a move. Uh, and now that I have kids, and, and we haven't been around a lot of kids, obviously, because of the pandemic, but one of their kids came out of the house with an apple, right? Crunching on an apple. So Serafina comes. At the comes, people you're visiting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Serafina comes up, Daddy, Daddy, I want an apple. Now, what's your take here? My kid wants an apple. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ask him right. for an apple for my kid because I'm I'm wait, you know, like I'm waiting to see if he offers the apple. It's the same thing with the water. I'm not going to give in on the apple because the apple might trigger him to go, oh, oh, wait, you guys want something? You know, like, I, I'm going to, I go, no, I can't have an apple right now. So I go into my side stash for my daughter. I get her some mango slices that, that we brought. So I give her, like, our snack because I don't want to ask him right. for an apple for my kid. But here, here's another move. Here's another yeah. move. Because the other kid came out with a bagel. So, so, so there's three kids. Two of them are eating. One a bagel, one an apple. Now, I don't want to be the guy that goes, hey, you might give my daughter 
a bagel? Because I don't know their bagel supply. Because I don't know. I don't want to put the guy in the spot. <laughs> and then because that other bagel might be for the other kid. You know what I'm saying? Right. So so I pump the brakes on asking for anything, and I go to my bag and get out the mango slice. All right. So I go, okay. He ain't even offering food to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I know these are good people and friends, but what's yeah. what, is there a mental lapse going on here? Your kid, a kid, and when my daughter brought out a bagel, you got to go. Did you get a bagel for your friend? Did you ask your friend if they want a bagel? Right? And if you go with the last bagel, then I go, then you put it back. You don't eat the last bagel in front of them. Cut it in half. <laughs> you cut it in half, and you know, or, or, or okay. put it back if. Uh, yeah, exactly, man. Okay. Unbelievable. So now you and then when you start going into your own stash, that's when the person's supposed to see that and go, no, no, no what are you talking? Let me go to the fridge. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. None of yeah. it. Man. New house. He's, he's he's in his head, maybe. Now, I've told this story to a few people that are close to me. And it came up a couple of times. Ah, he just moved in. Yeah. You know, yeah. This first day. He, he he don't even have his clothes hung yet. And he's going to give you an apple? Right. My answer to that is, <laughs> the day we moved into this house, yeah. the next day, I had a Super Bowl party. <laughs> 50, 50 people here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fifty people. Get and the you apple. Can't, you can't get an apple and a water for the kid. <laughs> wow, man. <laughs> so now, <laughs> two hours, two hours in, we get the. Uh, you want a water or Perrier? They brought down the the a couple Fiji water. And a Perrier. We finally got the water, right? Well, two hours in. What were you doing for two hours? Checking out the whole house or just well, now no, just sitting? Kind of, just, uh, we were like laying outside. I was laying on the grass and he was on the team. We're talking about, you know, yeah. the house. We're talking about the pandemic and, you know, just what you would normally do. Kids were on the swing set. Uh, <sighs> Their kids want chocolate milk. No. And Sophia never had chocolate milk, but her eyes lit up when she heard chocolate and milk put together. We, we just don't have chocolate milk here at the right. house. Yeah. Uh, I didn't grow up on chocolate milk. Neither did uh, I. I think, and I, I think my, I might get a little feedback from this. Uh, like trade. Oh, high level. High level. <laughs> I don't care if you're doing the squirt or the, or the three oh, scoop God. stir. Yeah, uh, yeah. These, of course. My, my daughter's had like three yoo-hoos maybe in her life. So she's had yoo so few times that when she sips it, her knees buckle. She can't even stand. That's okay. how the, I mean, come on, yoo was fantastic. I, I didn't even know what yoo were. Until when? What uh, do you mean? Just now I'm putting it together that it's probably a chocolate milk, right? Come guy. You don't know what a you who is? No. You don't know what a you who is, the you who ch chocolate drink. No. This is every listener we have right now is this is beyond whale eggs uh, caviar. I never had one. And if I'm guessing, is the packaging brown and yellow? <coughs> yes. Okay. Then I've seen it, I've never had it. A yoo or even better, honestly, for me these days, um, when I'm hungover, which is never anymore, I don't drink that much, but Nestle chocolate Nestle chocolate milk, like you shake it, it's also yeah. yellow and blue. Yeah, Ice yeah, yeah. cold, suck that down. Oh, my God, is that good. But, yeah, that, to have chocolate milk in your house, yeah, that's, you know, that's the same kind of people that have cookie crisp and fruity pebbles. <laughs> How did our parents not get arrested for that shit? Serving me Captain Crunch and expecting me to go learn shit? What the fuck? Bizarre. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so Sefi and I are a chocolate milk. She's dying to have one. And he brought out the chocolate milk for the kid. Thank God. And then he brought out he brought out a bagel. So All right. So he got it. He got he the got bagel. Going. Yeah, he got, he got going. He kicked in two and a half hours in. My kid's eating a bagel and a chocolate milk. I'm like, all right. And Did she love the chocolate milk? I didn't hear anything about normally if she likes something on the car ride home, she you know, she talks about it. But I think she even tastes it and so the fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you start raising them in a way, bro. And those little things, they yeah, it's unbelievable. Oh, so God, that's funny shit to me. <laughs> so, so his wife comes home, and this is towards the tail end of the visit. You know, we talked to her for about 25 minutes, talked about the house and this and that and the other thing. And we left. Now on the ride home. That's all we were talking about is like, you know, the food and the house and what have you. But stuff like that, when that happens, I kind of enjoy it because, A, it's something to talk about, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, and I make more of a meal out of it than, you know, maybe most people, right? Of course. Because what I'll do is I'll share this story with about six or seven people on the phone, right? Yeah. yeah. Like when you call when you call me, I'm not saying you personally, but if you're a part of my life and you call me, I always got something like that to yeah. tell you. Right? Uh, and then right. It, it it spawns a conversation. Absolutely. Like we're doing now. We're 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 thirty eight minutes in talking about my visit. Yeah, it gives it gives the the listener or whoever you're talking to something to talk about you know i'm right. not into one of these like where you get on the phone and it's a hey, you know what's going on I, I i i love when someone goes what do you think of this shit and then they go into a thing and like oh yeah give me it right? yeah yeah and anything like that just have an opinion analyze the small things oh i love yeah. it dude. do it forever <laughs> i climbed into bed last night with jackie 11 30 at night i climb into bed we watched this show called The Crown about the Queen of England on Netflix. And the guy who plays the prince, he told, he told like this, you have a father. I am your father. <laughs> right? It's fucked up how he talks. <laughs> so I climbed in the bed last night at 1130. She's sound asleep, right? I go, Jack. And she's like, what, what? I go, you know the guy who talks like this when he plays the dig the father? And she goes, yeah, what about him? I go, do you think he really talks like that in real life? Or he just does that fucked up accent for the sh to get the part. And she's like, oh, my God, you're asking me this shit now? And I go, well, it's so... She goes, I think he does it for the part. I go, what a choice. Can you imagine going in on the audition? I like to eat the big, you can't be big. But it's the little things, right? Most people don't give a shit about the little, all the little shit floating around. Oh, I am I am on board, bro. I, it's like, uh, and I'm I'm shocked that you woke, woke up your wife to ask her that <laughs> mid sleep. Hey. Well, she, I thought she was on the cusp, <laughs> not down yet, you know. So I don't know, man. Yeah, oh, we have those people God. when they climb into bed and they're like I was sleeping. You like you like you, you hit the bed. Thirty seven seconds. You were in the bed for thirty seconds. I can't. If that, if you literally were asleep, then that means you were fucking barely able to get up the stairs. That bullshit, <laughs> right? <laughs> By the way, those two old ladies cackling. Mu they were at it again this morning. I gotta. Oh, I gotta. On, bro, I mean, I gotta say something. I gotta roll down the window and just be like, ladies, can you keep it down a little? I, I just have to. It's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, one last thing. My neighbor next door, the one with the kid that's moving in with the kid, but they're doing a lot of work on the house. They haven't moved yeah, in yeah. yet, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I've showed you a picture of this <clears throat> old army trailer I have that hooks up to the back of my Tahoe. It's a, uh, it's like it looks like the back half of a pickup truck, and it's from World War II. And they used to put ammunition in it and put it on, hook it up to the back of the jeep to drive ammunition out onto the to the battlefield. It's an antique. My father-in-law. Redid it for me, and I hook it up to the Tahoe to dump leaves and shit, right? 
got yeah. has a license plate, it plugs in, the brake lights, the whole thing, man. You know, the whole thing. She knocks on my door two days ago, right? The lady next door. Mm -hmm. Before she knocks on my door, Jackie had just left to run. Sadie's at school. And I see the lady standing in my driveway. And I see her trying to decide if she should knock on my mudroom door or my front door. Right? She's like going back. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. You ever have that where you... You see someone getting ready to come knock on your door before they knock on it. I mean, I know you don't have that whole great bit about on the thing, but it's like, you know, and I know I got to answer to my neighbor, right? So she comes up to my front door and I go, hey, what's up? And she goes, this is literally how she starts. What can I do as an awesome neighbor to thank you for lending me your trailer? And I go, my army? trailer thing and she's like yeah i have old appliances the contract is taken out and i need to take them away and i'm like oh my father-in-law rigged that thing up so it, it only plugs into my tahoe and if you don't have lights on it you'll get a ticket okay okay uh, that's fine don't say anymore say i understand and you know when someone asks you for something and they back off so quick when you start to say no <laughs> that that they should they, you're backing off so fast that you know you should have never even asked in the first place, right? Like, could you give me a ride to the airport? Uh, no, 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 I told her this. Did, did you know it's fine? You're asking to borrow my trailer? You're gonna hook it up to your truck? Unbelievable, this lady. And she's not even moved in yet. She hasn't even laid her head down. So he's gonna call me in the middle of the day to come give her a fucking foot rub <laughs> when she moves in. <laughs> now listen. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Would you not let anyone borrow that? Or was it the person who was asking that determined whether would, or not? As you would say, great question. And you actually came up in the answer because I told Jackie, I was like, someone like my brother, my buddy Larry or Sebastian, if they live nearby, of course. Outside of that, pff, you're asking. And I go, you know what? I don't think any one of those three guys would even ask to borrow it. I'd have to offer it. That's why. This is crazy. <laughs> so, second, yeah. qu second question. You do certain things with that trailer. Primarily, what, leaf removal? Everything from leaf removal to, uh, you know, buying tires, uh, m anything. Anything that you would need the back of a pickup truck for, I hook this up to the Tahoe and take care of it. Grab and get have my you, mulch. Okay, have you ever uh, told yourself, ah, I don't want to put this in there because it's like, uh, it might dirty. screw it up. or I, I, I'll just tell you where I'm going with this. When I heard she was going to put appliances in there, right. I yeah. felt like, you know, a wrong turn, the appliance falls down, hits the thing, scratches it up. I don't know what it looks like, but I just heard appliances and trailer, and I'm like, eh, that, that's like a big ask. A big you know, like, ask. You know? Big ask. Because I won't lend anything out to anybody if I wouldn't do it for myself you know like if i wouldn't if i don't say i don't i don't move appliances in this trailer then no one that borrows it is going to do something <laughs> that i never do in it you know what i'm saying <laughs> great point there's never been a stove or dishwasher in my fucking trailer and there ain't gonna be on your watch lady <laughs> yeah absolutely <clears throat> oh and, and God. the contract is sitting in a driveway with a pickup truck. Why aren't you asking him? It's bizarre, man. Bizarre. Oh, that uh, you know, and, and and I don't know if you were caught off guard by the question, but like when did you become concerned about other people getting a ticket? You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, oh. <laughs> like right, right, you know? I mean, seriously, if it was something like you, I go, bro. The lights won't hook up for you, but no one's going to pull you over. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> what her? I'm like, I hate to see you get a ticket. <laughs> Read the room, lady. Get off the fucking porch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man. So my dad so, on the phone with him the other day, and uh, he goes, oh, you, uh, Sebastian had a great line. I was watching some video of him. He's talking about the coronavirus vaccine, and he goes, uh, my veins are wide open. They're wide open already. He's like, I thought that was a great line. Oh, bro, I, dude, I had a... I, uh, it was one of those weeks where I came back on Tuesday, and then uh, and I worked out hard uh three days in a row and i thought it was maybe i worked out too hard or i i I got lightheaded or something but then i'm like maybe this is the coronavirus uh the mental wear and tear yeah that you get from coronavirus let me preface the story by saying i have a great life i have a great family very fortunate okay Mm -hmm. because anytime you start bitching about coronavirus you'll get people Let's say, hey, you know, thank God you got the, the, I I get it. I'm just saying the way my mind works, there's a lot of different scenarios and there's a lot of holes I go down, right? All right. Like, 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 like you were saying, and, I, and we, bri- we briefly touched on this before we fired this up. Yeah. Give the, give the uh, audience... Taste. Yeah, no, we we were talking you <laughs> about scenarios that we put our minds in throughout all this, and I'm like thinking about the way the virus is going and politics, and 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 I'm like, I literally was laying in bed the other day, and I had myself doing sheetrock five years from now. <laughs> literally, look, I'm a sheetrock guy. Like like <laughs> with two belts coming to the house. Do I need to take my shoes off, Miss? <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> So I heard you used to do comedy. Yeah, yeah, that was in another lifetime, as they say. <laughs> you mind if I ate my lunch in the in the truck in the driveway? I mean, I'll drive away from the home. No, you can you can eat it in the backyard too if you want. Oh, that's nice. Literally, bro. I don't, I'm afraid what we do isn't even going to be a fucking thing anymore, man. <laughs> there gonna be people used to go and watch one person oh. do the thing that and like yeah. I mean, no, I, bro, I'm with you. I mean, I'm sitting there looking at Caruso and, and he's going to, when he, when he's like 12, he, he goes, dad, you know, I wish I could have seen you do stand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh God. I, so, well, I mean, did you, uh, did you see Kevin Hart, uh, uh, did it was, has a special now out that he did in his house. Yeah, uh, yeah, I saw that it was out. I didn't see it. Uh, Starts out, he's walking through his house. It's it's really quite not bad under the circumstances. You know what I mean? He it almost looks like a, the the special someone's making that's just starting out, like being in a small thing. But he's walking through his house to start it, and uh, it, it, it looks like he's the only one on a cruise ship. His house is just stunning, man. Like <laughs> oh god. I remember I knew him for a brief time. He was playing the clubs where I was for a brief time. Like he got famous like that, you know, but he was like such, I'm sure he still is, but such a nice guy. You know what I mean? So So he uh, was kicking around the New York clubs when you were, when you were there. Yeah. Yeah. And he, even when his autobiography came out and he has the thing where you have the pictures in the middle of it, there's a picture of him talking with like, I want to say Chappelle and someone else. At the cellar, and in the picture, in the background, you can see me sitting on a stool smoking a cigarette in his, in his autobiography, like, because uh, we're playing the same rooms, yeah, but like I said, you know, gosh, must have been there about a year, and then, boom, gone, movies. But yeah, so he did a show, and he walks through his house, and then he goes to this room in his house, and there's a stage, and he's got friends over and masks, and, you know, I only watched the beginning of it, but, the, yeah, like, pretty quickly had a, a pretty funny bit I was laughing at. I can't remember it. But, I mean, is this, you know, the new I, way? I don't, I don't know. What Pick are you a gonna, room, you start, bro. Get that <laughs> nest done. Do it from the nest. <laughs> <laughs> A spiritual nest show. <laughs> oh, God. But I, I, I was going through it this week, sitting there going, because... And, and 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 maybe you could tell me, but how in the hell are we going through a surge? Okay, because the numbers yeah. are, are 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 going up. Now, when yeah. this thing first came out, 
we didn't have a handle on it. We didn't have masks, okay? Mm-hmm. And we're not, we weren't seeing the numbers that we're seeing now. And now everybody's wearing masks and nothing's open. How the fuck is this thing going around? I can't believe you're saying that. I can't. I, I was in, of all places, I went Thanksgiving food shopping today with Jackie, and we were in all these, one of the stops, and we're all wearing the mask. And I had a moment like you. I'm, 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 I got my elbows on the cart, hunched over. And I'm looking at everyone in the masks, and I look at her, and I'm like, Jack, what are we doing? I mean, we have a surge now. Do you, what, why are we wearing these fucking things? They're not even working. We look like a bunch of fucking idiots right now, all of us. <laughs> and she's like, uh, keep it down. She goes, we got to do something, right? You know, but I was like trying to get maybe a revolution going in my head, like right there in the moment, because I'm right there with you. I'm like, yeah, all Cuomo does on our end, I don't know about your guys so much. He comes on and he yells at us. Like if a surge happens, that never doesn't mean the masks aren't working. That just means a bunch of people are cheating, it, right? It's like, guy, look around. We're all wearing them. We're all wearing them and nothing's helping, all right? Stop, stop acting like, you know, it's the Jewish people's synagogues or it's a bunch of drunk keg party college kids. It's we're all masked up and it's doing <laughs> dick. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting here going, first of all, we got a curfew and maybe we got a curfew. I know. Right? Yeah. Because the virus 10, really comes out at night. 10, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. We're sleeping. Oh We're sleeping during that time, right? Eh? Yeah. If you really wanted to put the curfew, shouldn't you put it during the day when people are out? Like, why is it at night that's, when no one's out? Yeah, like, what? why does that... that what that's is it going to say? Do? That's a great point. They go, well, it's, to, it's, it's for the bars. You're sleeping, but uh, anyone in their 20s, <laughs> the idea is they're all out of the bar tearing it up. Okay. Well, okay, but what I'm saying is at 7 to 10, you could go to a bar and tear it up, but then at 10 o'clock, well, what I'm saying is I know the, the bar is open before 10 o'clock, no? Absolutely. It's, uh, I, I, bro, you're 100% right. Why can't we just, that, that's why none of this makes any sense. It's the same thing in your state and mine with small businesses. If I own a hardware store, I got to shut down, but I can go to Home Depot to get the hardware shit. Why, <laughs> if Home Depot can be open, why can't I be open, man? Why, it's, it's like you're, you're purposely trying to shut me down. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, yeah, it got really hairy this week just because I started kind of going down these rabbit holes and it was more about my kids. I'm sitting there looking at Serafina and Caruso. Shit, Caruso's, uh, what, almost a year and a half. He hasn't played with a boy yet. Been, you know, he's been playing with adults. This ain't, you know, like, yeah. my daughter's three and a half. Adults. Yeah. Like, this is the time where she, you know, like, learns sharing and this and that. And what's this going to go on? Another another eight months we're going to do this? You're right. No, you're, you're, dude. God, you're freaking me out now. I mean, just yesterday, <laughs> Sadie said, we're having dinner and Jackie and I are saying something. Sadie's like, what's that? And Jackie goes, Sadie, you don't have to understand everything we're saying. We're two adults talking. I feel like the kid's going, give me a fucking kid. All right? I mean, there's no one to talk to. There's nobody around. <laughs> you think I want to be talking about taxes? <laughs> yeah. That kid's going to have a 401k plan set up at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh man okay so this is how bad it got and again i i have a saint for a wife i don't know where she gets it from but gotta give her gotta give it up to her because of her optimism she's like you know this is a situation we have this is the cards dealt let's make the best of it that's yeah. that's her attitude my attitude is, you know, I'm walking around bitching, screaming. Yeah. So our whole thing was like, we got to start doing stuff outside the house and outdoors where the virus is harder to get. So we went to the botanical gardens now. Nice call. Nice call. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> I hear, but bota- listen, botanical. Okay. I love botanicals. Bronx Botanical Garden, been there. 
You kidding? All right. All, All right. right. Let, let me just frame it for you. Botanical garden is always something coming from the wife. Okay. That's just. Yeah. It, l- listen, is it. So, a guy doesn't. I never would call you and go, Pete, what are you doing? That? Yeah, no, I'm just hanging on now. What little botanical garden? Look, we, we would never go. Mm, we wouldn't. We wouldn't. But let's say we both work in mm. New York City or some place where there's a botanical garden within five blocks. Is it feasible that we go, oh, want to meet up for a cup of coffee and walk to the botanical garden? I got to talk to you about something. Or would you be like, what? The botanical? Can't we just have the conversation at the coffee shop? And we just go to the... The Central Park and walk around. I, this is this listen. is a this is a good one for the for the listeners to tweet out. And let us know, you know, is it is it weird for a man to like not want to go to a, to want to go to a botanical garden? I mean, if I, there's I, a, if there's I would another, never go act- another man, absolutely not. You're absolutely okay, right there, about that. If there's another activity and it's wrapped around the garden, like you say, listen, I need to talk to you. It's about the cast. Meet at the botanical garden. <laughs> Sounds fucking weird. You're right, dude. There is no scenario where one man will meet another man at a botanical garden. No. <laughs> it's definitely a woman's idea, without a doubt. But a man, I- and they're attractive. <laughs> <laughs> what, man? <laughs> so this was something that was for the kids. And my, not my argument, but I'm like, it's, it's a f- bunch of flowers and see you know. yourself. <laughs> you you are in a I, bad way. It's I, a bunch I, of flowers. What the fuck? I, I was I was questioning whether or not the kids would be interested in walking through a garden with all these plants. Okay. All right. That's what I was. Uh, all right. All right. Now, I mean. if it's a, if it's a zoo. There's movement. There's animal. Like, ha, ha, ha. There's like sound. So yeah. absolutely but, botanical garden is a zoo with no animals. That's it's what true. it is. Okay? It's true. It, it, right. No, I listen. I'm not saying if in a world of uh, all options, a kid's gonna choose a botanical garden. But under the circumstances, I'm thinking it was smart thinking. It was a good thing to think of to do. Maybe check out the botanical garden. I I agree. I agree. It's, it's something to do. But I had a I had a. A stench coming off me of like negativity. Yeah, going into the garden. So it's crazy time, man. It was gonna be. It was gonna be hard for me to get it up for the for the garden. So (laughs) (laughs) this this is my problem (laughs) with this virus. I'm hypersensitive of my surroundings, so when I go out. I'm looking at people and how if they got a mask on, if it's half down, if they get close to me, you know, like, like, uh, we're, we're walk, put it this way, we're walking through the garden and already I got somebody on my back, you know, like when you feel, you know, you know like it's either past me or, or, or back the fuck up. Right? This, yeah, yeah. You, you ever get the people that are that, that I could hear their conversation clearly? Because they're, they're right here. So I, I have to tell my wife, babe, do, do a side pull off. So we do a pull off and we and I act like I'm looking at something. So that person goes ahead. So I go, babe, look at this tree right here. And she goes, what tree? I go, just fine. It's, it's just, wait. <laughs> just, just wait till they pass. So that's. <laughs> So I got this mask on that I generally don't use, right? But it was like when it, th- this is the worst thing about it. I left the house a couple of days ago to go get gas and and go to the grocery store. <sighs> the worst thing about leaving the house during this pandemic, like I was down the street going to make a left at the light and I forgot my mask. Now, to go back to your house to get a mask. I could see you lost the cell phone, the wall, ah, but to go and have to do a U-turn to go pick up my mask, it's depressing. Uh, so It is, it is, man. Without a doubt. I had a mask I not typically use. I'm walking around, it was itching my, my nose. It was one of these masks that I had to keep doing this. Yeah. 
I pulled down my mask just to itch right here because I felt like I got some lint. There's a guy. Excuse me, sir. Put your mask on, please. Hey, what the fuck? I'm just itching my lip, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, they got mask did? patrol. At the garden. Holy At the botanical sh- garden. Outside at the garden. Outside. You had you had to wear a mask outside. Everybody had a mask on. Holy okay. shit. I mean, I can, I can maybe I can see the mask, but to police it that intensely. I was in Walmart today, and I pulled mine down because I needed to... Lick my fingers to open up a plastic bag to put produce oh, bro, in. Bro, bro, Jackie that, goes, you, bro that, that, I'm sorry, I gotta stop you. That's a recipe for getting a corona. <laughs> <laughs> You're licking your lips out in public after touching shit. <laughs> <That's>, well, <laughs> <laughs> You're just feeding yourself the virus. That's that's what she said. She goes, I can't open the bag. I can't get it to open. So I pulled down my mask. I licked my fingers. And she goes, guy, I could have did that. You just gave yourself the virus. <laughs> now I got my mask down. And I, I refused to put my mask up until I get it open. And it was about 30 seconds. And then I looked around. I was curious to see if anyone had a problem. Because I think... My problem is, and I think you got the same one a little bit too, right? When I'm walking like through Walmart, and today I was with the food, sh- uh, the Christmas fucking bullshit wrapping paper and stuff, and I saw people with the mask on but not covering the nose, right? Now, I don't, I'm not one of these people that go, oh, I'm going to get the virus because your nose isn't covered. But what I am is I'm following the rules, and I'm way cooler than you. So if I'm following the rules, who the fuck are you not to follow the rules? If anyone shouldn't be following the rules, it's fucking me. I'm cool. I'm in the most notable people of Fredonia, motherfucker. <laughs> Put in by a cast listener. Thank you very much, Jared. <laughs> Hack the system. But nevertheless... Right? It's like it's like you're thinking you're cooler than me and you're not. So put it on. <laughs> and I had a I had like you, I uh, those I had a blue one on. I don't know if yours is blue with a surgical one, but yeah, if you wear it too often it gets fuzzy on the inside and it starts itching your nose and you can't breathe. And I got a bad habit of biting my fingernails, so now I'm in the store pulling down, biting my fingernails. It's like just I, I I'm at the point, bro. Just I just want I just almost like hit me. Hit me, man. Just let's let's <laughs> Give me a best shot. Let's, let's see what's going to happen with this. I'm tired of dancing around it, man. Oh, man. It's... I can't go out in public because, like you, I look at other people and and, and what they're doing. And I noticed, and again, uh, I might be generalizing, but I think from the amount of people I've seen, foreign people... <laughs> Don't wear the mask. And if they do, they're not wearing it properly. All right? <laughs> now. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> These two Middle Eastern people there at the Botanical Gardens. Now, this is just a fact because I know Middle Eastern people. When they speak, there's a lot of shit flying out of their mouth, right? Oh, just yeah. because the language... You got to, you got to, you know, it comes from the throat. There's a lot of, oh, there's a lot of, right? Yeah, yeah. You it, need it, 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 water to speak that language, yeah, yeah. right? It's, it's, just, it's a lot, it's moist. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when, yeah. after, you know, if, an hour, if they wear a mask for an hour, they got to wring it out, right? <laughs> 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 ring it out. They got to rinse it out. <laughs> then ring it out. <clears throat> so they, there was these two Middle Eastern people in front of me, and they were like, you know, they were wearing the mask. You ever see them wear the mask as a chin strap? You ever see those people? Mouth. They, they just, it's, wear, it's, it's, it's under their chin. It, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a helmet. Uh, you know what I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is when you slide it up. Now you're in the game. This is the game. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, you know. So you know. do you ever think you're gonna get the coronavirus from the back? Like you're following somebody and they're talking and, and you you just know the shit's 
flying backward. I mean, a a good a good wind comes over, and you're getting hit with the virus. Well, you're, right? you're walking right into it. It's like they were they were walking tailpipe, and you're and you're behind <laughs> them, right? I know what you're saying. Dude, I, I, sometimes the other day I, I, you know, I could smell my breath with the mask on and I felt like I had the virus in my mouth, but I didn't, if I swallow, I'm doomed and I breathe out and I feel like it's coming right back at me. You know, it's rebounding and hitting me. I, I, I just, when is someone going to admit the masks aren't working? You know, I feel uh, like they're afraid to admit that because then they think we're all going to freak out and go, I guess we're giving up. Well, I don't know what the, what the, you know, like the science is or the data is on the mask wearing. But, you know, I was talking to Lana the other day, and, you know, fast forward a year and a half, two years from now, I have a feeling they're going to come out and go, it was in the water. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like... like, (laughs) Yeah. Like they got it all wrong, right? Yeah. I got to regroup this week. I got to regroup. I got to have a better attitude. Are it's you Monday. staying off of social media? Yeah, two weeks, two weeks, bro. No social awesome. media. And Lana goes, if this is the way you are off social media, get back on it. Because I can't deal with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but, come on. They got three different vaccines. They're all just about ready. Again, you, talk, you hear some people in the news going, First ones that should be going out to frontline workers uh, by the mid-December, and you're like, that's so exciting. Then you listen to Cuomo, and he's like, we had to move heaven and earth to get the, the, the tests for 10 million people, and it took eight months. There's no way this vaccine's getting out there for at least six to seven months. I mean, this guy okay. is like doom and gloom, man. This is what I want to know, right? We're hitting a surge, right? It's been nine months since, since this thing hit. And they're worried about, oh, overpopulating the hospitals, this and that. If you remember, and I think in April and May, they had ships coming in, right? In New York, they had a ship that pulled in that was going to take care of the overflow, right? Right. Where's the ships now? Yeah. Get them back. Get get them back in. They had a ship that pulled up to Long Beach over here. So... And you had nine months to get ready for any of this. Why is this a shock? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they did, what the fuck you been doing for nine months? Yeah. All the, all the, all the schools that are still closed, no plan whatsoever. <laughs> no I think no plan. Some yesterday that said, like, virtually, I think two 18 year olds died under 18, like some, some crazy, like late, like in ever. I don't know. I, I, listen, I sound like Trump giving a fucking speech. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to shut my mouth. <laughs> I, I, at least I'm not the president. I'm doing a podcast here, but yeah, uh, I don't know. It just seems like if anything should be open, it's the schools, man. Not only is all Sadie school open, I got her in karate now. Bro, you're living in a di- on a different planet over there in Fredonia. It, karate, yeah. school, class. She's still this taking piano. F- she's taking piano from the from the woman. Uh, yeah, but that's all virtual. But yeah, that's, oh, that's virtual. That's, that's insane, man. That's you got to see that. She's gonna be the next Alanis Mars set. It's unbelievable what's going on with that. But uh, the the karate, I gotta tell you, you like me. Like I don't you love? I love when I make my dad laugh. Like oh, for me, yeah. that's like sure. that's like that's when I know it's. Pff. So I'm on the phone with him the other day, and I said, "Dad, I got her in karate now. It's like a third class, and she loves it. You know all the stances. She does Japanese words, and I go. And when she's in class, I'm up on a hill looking down, playing with the dog, waiting for her. And I go, and I can see her dance school, and I can see her karate school. I'm so glad she quit dance and went to karate. And my father's like, "Yeah." Uh, she's still friends at dance. I go, they do, but I did that. What are you going to do with dance? I go, bottom line, 10 years from now, you, you can't dance your way out of an attempted rape. You know what I'm saying? That? <laughs> <laughs> but you can karate chop your way out of it. <laughs> a little hardcore. Oh, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's what he said. By the way, your buddy had a good one the other day, man. He was talking about his veins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you oh, seem upbeat. Man. You seem good. No, man. listen, I gotta tell you that this podcast has been my, you know, 
savior. I mean, talking with you, laughing with you, it's just a, you know, it's just a good release. You know, I had a, I had a pain in my chest before we started this thing. You know, it's gone. Yeah, you know, I don't know if it's gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh god! Oh, uh, you, you know what? You know, yeah. because I'll I'll talk to my dad on Facetime and whatnot, and you know, there's like I wear my emotions on my sleeve. You know, if I'm feeling down, I'm telling you, yeah, god, this sucks. I'm I ain't feeling good right now. So I don't know if your family does this, but like I'll tell my dad that I'll tell my mom, and right away they're on the phone with another family member. You talk to Sab. <laughs> no, what's going on? <laughs> Fucking down, you know. Like, <laughs> like everybody knows in my family, everybody's mental state at any given time during the day. Right? Yeah, yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing's a surprise in my family. <laughs> like I get off the phone with my mom, I call my sister. You talk to mom? No, why? She couldn't sleep last <laughs> night. <laughs> That's awesome, man. You guys are so tight. Shit, I. I got a text from my brother two days ago at uh, 5.45 a.m., three of them in a row. All I have to tell you is they start out with, people that voted for, you know, <laughs> and then each, they don't know what they're in for. Hey, the mama, man, we're fucking noobs. <laughs> 5.45 a.m. Oh, shit. What did he do? I mean, get out like, of, what did he do? Like get a, out of bed? <laughs> he got what? out of bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's as if I wrote it. I mean, just to, I feel the same way to a fault. <laughs> yeah. God. By the way, are you staying home? Is your mom coming for Thanksgiving? What are you, are you, you're not? No, you, just the family. Yeah. Just, same with us. Not even seeing the in-laws or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So It's a, it's a shutdown. So we were in uh, Aldi's today, right? And uh, and and also Walmart. And I, I I I'm just stunned by some of the food products people are putting in their cart. I mean, just you ever like look at in their cart and then give them a look, like <laughs> <laughs> like just and they don't even get what you're saying. But I'm like, you know, just prepackaged shit. For, it's unbelievable, right? So uh, when we're leaving Aldi's. Uh, I've told you about Jack. He's just uh, very, you know, budget conscious all the time, no matter what. But literally, you know, we've talked about this once before. You put your cart back and it has a quarter. And when you lock it in, you get your quarter. So I'm going to put the cart back. And she goes, make sure you get my quarter. So like when you push it. So I push it in and the quarter isn't coming free. <clears throat> and I'm like, this is ridiculous. Because she's going to want me to show you have the fucking quarter. Oh, God. A lady standing behind me goes... Are you done with that cart? And I turned to go and go, I go, yeah, no, I'm putting it away. And she goes, here, then just take my quarter and I'll take, and she hands me a quarter and takes my cart. And now I'm walking away going, I can't, I can't believe I just took the lady's quarter. <laughs> <laughs> it was all happening so fast, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Goes, you take my quarter and I'll just take that cart. And I go, okay, thanks. And I put the car. Oh, God, so embarrassing. Oh, my 50 God. years old, 50 years old. <laughs> With Corona on the fucking quarter. <laughs> That's before I licked my fingers at Walmart. I feel like God's looking down at me going, are you fucking kidding me, guys? I'm, I'm trying to meet you halfway here. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah. Oh, anyway, man. Hopefully they um, get this up before Thanksgiving, right? No, no we man. Well, this is, what, Saturday it goes up? I mean, can Saturday. we get a rush job on this, man? Yeah, so we'll can... see. Uh, th yeah, hopefully we can get this thing up before Thanksgiving. People got something to listen to. Um, all right, I got a bolt. Yeah. Uh, always a pleasure, my man. Take Same care. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Pete and Sebastian Show. We will see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>